Beep beep everybody. Today we're going to try something a little bit different. Instead of opening up packs and stuff, we're going to go through and highlight the 1974 Topps baseball set. I bought this set complete in, I'm thinking 1995 or 96. And I, I couldn't tell you where I bought it. I know I bought it from a catalog. And um, I'd have to dig around and see if I can find the original box it came in. This was a hand-collated set. This was the first set that Topps ever released in a factory-sealed set. And they were available through J.C. Penney's mail catalog, I believe. Um, in 1974, I was... <laughs> really little and had no idea what even baseball was by that point um but i had always wanted to get this set um because at the time in the 90s it was the oldest set available from tops that was still under a thousand dollars the 75 set was already over a thousand and I could kick myself for not buying the 76 and 77 sets because they were worth about three to 400 at the time. And I probably could have afforded it, but I didn't. Um, and when you buy a complete hand collated set, you don't know what you're going to end up with. So not every single card in here is going to be in great condition. Uh, overall, the set was pretty, pretty nice. Um, one of the features of the set is that it is the first set that was that the entire set was available at one time. Prior to 1974, Topps issued uh, their sets through the year in a in a series of cards. Um, I I don't know how many series in a year they had. It, it may have varied or it may have been consistent. It could be four or five. I'm guessing. And so the first series would come out in the early part of the year and the second series. And at the end of the year, Topps was competing with football and basketball, their own products, by the way. And they were still issuing uh, their last series at around that time. So cards from prior to 1974 are worth a lot more because there are less of them. In 1974 is when the first year that they had the entire run available all year long. Uh, one of the other features they had in this set is uh, later on in the year they they issued uh, traded cards, which I believe were available in the regular packs of the 74 set. It wasn't a separate set. Um, the, the last thing I want to go over is the San Diego Padres were um, rumored to be moving to Washington and in the very early printings of this set uh, players on the Padres were listed as Washington but when that didn't pan out Tops had to immediately change them to say San Diego instead of Washington so the Washington variants are worth more than the San Diego versions uh, so the, the, the one key card of a player on the Padres, well, would be uh, Dave Winfield and Willie McCovey were both on the team at the time. And this would have been Dave Winfield's rookie card. I think I've got that right. Mm, I think I do. Um, so before we go on, uh, there's Nathan the Gnome, boop, and there's Cal Ripken with his pillows and his earbuds. And... Uh, Cal is listening to today to an album by Blue Sausage Infant called Flight of the Solstice Queens and it's pretty avant-garde so if you're into avant-garde music I can't recommend that enough and here's our plastic purple toilet <laughs> I don't know why so let's get into this the first card of the set is Hank Aaron and it's new all-time home run king but in 73 he finished the season with 713 and he would hit his 714th during the 74 season so they honored him with the first card and number one and they honored him with uh, some additional cards 
number two through six that went over through his uh, his career and showing older baseball cards of his and there's 54 to 57 on that that card and there's 58 to 61 and 62 to 65 And there's 66 to 69. And finally, 1970 to 73 cards. Uh, here's one example. This is the only one I have of a Washington card for a Padres player. And this is Vicente Romo. And um, I don't think it says anything about it on the back. It's just on the front, but the back, the backs of the 74 top set looks like this. And this is the only version of a Washington card that I have. Every, every other Padres player is a, has San Diego written up at the top. Okay. So here's our 1973 batting leaders, Rod Crew and Pete Rose. And the stolen base leaders, that's Tommy Harper and Lou Brock. And as you can see, the centering on these uh, leaves much to be desired, but that's common with these older, older cards. And this is the runs batted in leaders, Reggie Jackson and Willie Stargell. And you can see there's a little, little white printing orb over the R, and that's something you'll see on these older cards. And, uh, yeah, this one's a little rougher than some of the other ones, but you'll find that when you're buying a hand-collated complete set. These are our home run leaders from 73. That's Reggie Jackson and Willie Stargell. And our earned run average leaders are Jim Palmer and Tom Seaver. So we have a lot of Hall of Famers on the League Leaders cards. The strikeout leaders, that's Nolan Ryan and Tom Seaver. That's very early in Ryan's career. So let's get to the uh, regular base cards. So here's Hall of Famer Al Kaline. And here's Hall of Famer Willie McCovey. And as I said, um, it says San Diego here and Padres down here, whereas that Vicente Romo card had Washington up here and National League down there because, well, they didn't know what this wa hypothetical Washington team would be called. Uh, Thurman, catcher Thurman Munson. Let's hope someday they put him in the Hall of Fame. Here's an early Greg Luzinski card. His rookie card is from 1971. Here's Dwight Evans, also early in his career. Hall of Famer Juan Marichal with that very high leg kick of his. And they did have manager cards in this set, and this is Sparky Anderson. And you can see multiple orbs on this. There's a yellow one here and a yellow one here above the N. Sometime I might go through my collection and try to find the most orbed, orbed card I have. Uh, Dusty Baker, back when he was with the Braves. This is pretty far back in his career. Uh, Ron Say. I don't know. That's, that's pretty early in his career. I don't think that's a rookie card. Uh, manager Earl Weaver. And see, it, it also lists their coaches which is something that uh, not too many manager cards in the future would do. Here's an early Gorman Thomas card. If you remember Gorman Thomas, he was a, a low batting average power hitter for the Brewers. Um, <laughs> it tended to have really a lot of sweat-stained baseball caps. And this, I don't know if this is his rookie card or not. It's either his rookie card or it's a second year card. Okay. Uh, Hall of Famer Ron Santo. And this is on a landscape card. 
And here's uh, Tug McGraw. Hall of Famer Ted Simmons. This would be a third year card for him. Uh, Larry Boa, very early in his career. Greg Nettles. Uh, Hall of Famer Tony Perez. And here you can see another feature of these cards is this uh, printing smudge. That's not a smudge that came on later. That is due to the printing process from back then. Um, th those do devalue the cards in some way. And this one's a little bit rough on the corners. But overall, this I'm, I've been happy with the set when I first got it. Hall of Famer Don Sutton. Again, the centering is off. Hall of Famer Raleigh Fingers. Uh, Rusty Staub. Yeah, I'd, I'd put him in the Hall of Fame. I don't know about you folks. Uh, George Foster. This is early in his career. Uh, Hall of Fame Eddie Matthews as a manager of the Braves. And here's one of those traded cards, and this is uh, Philippe Lou. And you can see this is really badly cut. Uh, these little marks along the edge here are a guide for whatever cutting machine they were using to cut through. And they cut too far in one way, and you can see them. At least that's what I think is going on there. And you can see it's it, part of the design is almost sliced off down here and the, the card is like twisted the image is is sort of like on an angle on the card and the backs of the traded cards um show basically a, a an article about the uh, sort of a faux uh, newspaper with you know newspaper banner heading and and you can see the centering's bad here as it's cutting off this this printing statement down at the bottom is partially cut off and here's a traded card for Lou Piniella and one for Juan Marichal and another one for Ron Santo and uh, you can see they they must have airbrushed a new cap on him so they used an existing photo and uh, well, I don't know if it was airbrushing back in 1974. They, it may have been, they may have painted it onto the photo. I, I don't know. I'm really not sure how they did that back then. Uh, but with software today, you would, you would be able to do that a little bit easier, I think. Uh, Hall of Famer Johnny Bench. Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. Uh, Hall of Famer Rod Carew, and I seem to have two of Rod. <laughs> I'm not sure why. I may have bought one of them at a card show back in the 80s. There's Hall of Famer Lou Brock, and I know I have one more of him because I bought one recently at an antique mall that was in great shape. Uh, Hall of Famer Joe Morgan. And Hall of Famer Steve Carlton. Hall of Famer Willie Stargell. And if you saw my video on, uh, I think it's 2020 Tops Archives, there is uh, Willie Stargell in that set on the 74 design as well. And this one, uh, you can see a bit of a wax stain on the back. So this one came out from a wax pack. Here's uh, Carlton Fisk. And Veda Pinson. And Philippe Lou. Uh, Boog Powell. Tommy John. Hall of Famer Jim Cott. And Dave Concepcion who I would love to see in the Hall of Fame someday. Uh, Charlie Huff, early in his career. And here's Lou Piniello, 
in the Royals uniform before we, we saw the traded card before. And here's manager Billy Martin back when he was with Texas. Norm Cash. I'd like to see Norm get in the hall. Hall of Famer Tony Oliva. Uh, Dom Baylor back when he was with the Orioles. A pretty that's an early card for him it's not a rookie card uh hall of famer and manager yogi berra when he was managing the mets and here's an early card of bob boone i don't believe that's a rookie card i think it was the prior year hall of famer billy williams hall of famer burt blylevin Hall of Famer Fergie, Fergie Jenkins. <laughs> I am got to stop saying Fergie. <laughs> I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, or, Hall of Famer Orlando Cepeda. Uh, Dick Allen. Uh, it's a shame he's not in the Hall. Uh, I wish they had put him in years ago. He really deserves it. Hall of Famer Luis Aparicio. Great fielding shortstop. Hall of Famer Gaylord Perry, back when he was with the Indians. And Bobby Bonds, father of Barry. Hall of Famer Phil Necro. Uh, Hall of Famer Joe Torre, back in his playing career. Hall of Famer Jim Hunter. Here's Rico Petroselli. Steve Garvey. Uh, I think he should also be in the hall. And then Hal McRae, early in his career. Uh, Sam McDowell. He was a flame-throwing pitcher back in the 60s into the 70s. Uh, I think if he... Um, if he had had some more better years in the 70s, he would have been a Hall of Fame candidate. Uh, Rich Gossage, back when he was with the White Sox. And that's a very early card of his. And I think uh, the prior, either 71 or 72 is the Gossage rookie. I, I can't remember which. Here's Cecil Cooper, early in his career. This is not a rookie card for him either. Uh, I think he's a, his rookie's on the 72, and I think it's with Carlton Fisk. Uh, Tim McCarver. Bill Buckner, early on in his career. It looks like he has a little bit of a unibrow thing going on there. Uh, this was before he had that monstrous mustache of his. Dave came in back when he was with the Giants. Uh, this is the rookie card of Bucky Dent, uh, who started his career with the White Sox, uh, but was best known with, for his years with the Yankees. I did not know Bucky's uh, first name was Russell, Russell Earl Dent. And you can see there's even printing circle or orbs on the back of the cards, too. There's one right there above the 8 and the 2 in the number. Uh, All-Star Cards. Carlton Fisk and Johnny Bench, both Hall of Famers. And here's Dick Allen and Hank Aaron. And Reggie Jackson and Billy Williams. And there's Jim Hunter and Rick Wise. Uh, Bobby Mercer and Pete Rose. Uh, Brooks Robinson and Ron Santo. And uh, Rod Crew and Joe Morgan. They also issued uh, some... I don't think I have all of them here. I think I only have a, a couple examples of uh, playoff cards. And this is from the AL playoffs. And this one was separated from the set because that's Reggie Jackson on the front. 
And here's a World Series Game 6 card. And I think that, I'm not sure who that is. It might be Jackson also. And here's a Game 2 card. And I'm not sure who the player is on there, but uh, he must be a star player or I wouldn't have pulled it. And I, I just, I should have looked that up before I started the video. They also had uh, rookie cards with four players on it um, back in 74. You'll find that this varies through Topps history. Sometimes they only had two. Sometimes they, they, they typically had three. Um, but in the 70s, in 74... 75 76 I don't know about 76 74 75 77 and 78 they had four players on a on a on a future rookie kind of you know thing going on so this is a uh, Bake McBride's rookie and I think it's Brian Downing's but I'm not sure about that um if anyone knows if Brian Downing had an earlier card, uh, please leave it in the comments because I, I, I can't remember. Uh, these two, I don't know what happened to Ed Armbrister and Rich Blatt. Their names don't ring a bell. This is the Frank Tanana rookie card. Uh, Frank had a really great start to his career. He was a, a flame-throwing uh, pitcher. He had a lot of strikeouts, low-earned run average. For several years with the Angels, uh, and he ended up playing a long time into the early 90s, but he didn't really put up the same numbers as time went on. And I'm not, I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if he had an injury or anything like that. I, I didn't do any research to, to figure out how, why his, his strikeout numbers had, had dipped over the years. Um, he also had a, a pretty long time with the Tigers in the 80s. Did, did a little bit of bouncing around, too. Uh, this is the Bill Madlock rookie card. Uh, Bill Madlock won three batting titles, maybe four. I, I'm pretty sure he had three, but I don't know about if he had a fourth. Uh, finished his career hitting over 300, and I think he had just over 2,000 hits. Uh, I think he's a Hall of Famer. Um, I don't know if he'll ever get in. He's sort of like... In that gray area, his career numbers just aren't enough. And if they, if he had maybe five or six hundred more hits, they'd probably be an easier vote. Uh, this is the uh, Andre Thornton and Frank White rookie card, and on here it says Andy Thornton. But throughout his career, he was known as Andre Thornton. He was a power hitter for the Indians for a long time. And Frank White was uh, one of the better second basemen of the 70s and early 80s. And this is Ken Griffey Sr.'s rookie card, the father of uh, Junior. And unfortunately, this has <laughs> a couple yellow orbs up here, a tiny one and a bigger one. But not a bad looking card. Uh, off center, of course, but not too bad. So now we're going to get into some of the bigger players. Carl Yastrzemski, Hall of Famer. Uh, Hall of Famer Brooks Robinson. Hall of Famer Harmon Killebrew. Hall of Famer Reggie Jackson. Hall of Famer Bob Gibson. Uh... Pete Rose, Hall of Famer Frank Robinson, Hall of Famer Tom Seaver, and this is the second year card of Hall of Famer Mike Schmidt, prior to growing a mustache, which he was known to have most of his career, Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. And that looks like it's in pretty good shape. Rookie card of Dave Parker. Who I think really should be considered uh, more seriously for the Hall. Now that it's been many years now. And the number one big card of the set is the Dave Winfield rookie. Hall of Famer Dave Winfield. 
And this is the Padres version of this, not the Washington version. And to be honest, I'm not sure if there is a Washington version of this. I think there is. But this is the main rookie card of the 1974 set, with Dave Parker being the, the next best rookie. Uh, centering is, is a way off on this. It's pretty narrow on the top and the left. Um, but it looks pretty good. The corners look pretty sharp. There's a little bit of fuzziness on, I think, one of them. Uh, the back looks, uh, does have some centering issues too. But this is, this is the key card of this set. So there you have it, everyone. That's the 1974 Tops highlights. And uh, there's a couple more things I'd like to show before we go. This is what the checklist looks like from this. And uh, these are worth a bit more than a common card because they are unmarked. And it's hard to find cards from back then that are unmarked like this. And there were uh, several of them. And the and this one is for the traded set. Okay, and uh, you can see there's a they had a printing issue here. That that should have such should say trades checklist. That's I don't believe that's an error card. It's just well, you know sometimes the printer didn't work out too well. And there were also team cards. This is the Yankees. And the backs of them have uh, some really hard text to read that shows uh, a list of the world championship clubs for the team. And um, looks like uh, pitching and batting uh, team records of pitching and batting. It's kind of hard to read. And there were quite a few of these. <laughs> and I'm not going to go over all of them, but there was one for each team. Uh, let me double check the... Uh, uh, no, I, I don't have the... I, I, oops, sorry, Desquake. The, I have the Padres version. So I, I don't know if there was a Washington version of this. I think there was. So that's the 1974 top set. It's got a pretty simple design, uh, but sometimes cards look pretty good in a more simpler design like that. They're they're easier to read. It, you know, uh, too comp too much, too much for the eye to go through can be tiring. I guess you could say that. And the backs are a, a little bit complicated. But not, not too bad. That's like a typical tops back from the 70s. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like it, please click the like button. Um, if you like my content, I would appreciate it if you subscribed. And I'd be happy to have you as a subscriber. Um, hope you all have a great day. If you're feeling in the dumps, open up some baseball cards and cheer yourself up. Um, take care, everyone. Beep, beep.